Hey guys, so today we're going to look at how to scrape weather data using beautiful soup and uh, on, in Python, of course. Right? So we'll use Python and beautiful soup library and request library to crawl and also scrape weather data. Right, so that's what we're going to do. Let's get on with it. So it's not going to be a perfect um, tutorial as usual and it will always be practical though. Right, so that in the for the sake of time and not to confuse you, I'm not going to go into any weird tangents, any weird, um, very strict ways of doing things. I'm just the whole point of it is to give you an easy introduction to Beautiful Soup, how to crawl and scrape together, and also to traverse in terms of using selectors some of the tips and ideas about dealing with complex pages and to get to actual results that you can use straight away okay that's the whole point of this let's get on with it so here's what we're going to scrape um, we're going to go to weather.com it's a pretty good website um, let's scrape whatever but pretty easy pretty good so let's give us a challenge and move to the 10 day forecast let's scrape everything here all right let's try and get everything that we got going here which is um, the day you know 29 Jan, what is the description of that? How would you describe it? What's the high, what's the low, what's the precipitation, wind, speed, and humidity? Okay, so let's see if we can pull all that out. So that is the idea. And before we can do all that, we need to know how to even crawl it, uh, how to even fetch this data. All right, so uh, let's see. This is the URL that we need to fetch. Let's keep that and put it in a variable. Crawl URL. We'll need that sooner or later. And the way to get um, data is to use the request module so use request dot get is the command and this is the format you put the url here and you optionally can put send headers to it i like to send headers because um, many websites the proper way to crawl anything is to always be pretending to be a browser never reveal to be a crawler because that's a dead giveaway there are many other ways uh, where people, web servers will find out you're a crawler anyway. So this, you don't have to make it easy for them. So we're going to send a header, especially one header for now, which will tell the, which will pretend to be a browser by using the string card. Um, and so there's an array, so we're going to use like that. Um, called user agent. Okay, so we get to, to user agent. That is the way to send that string, colon, there. So we need to pretend to be one. Uh, user agent strings are sent by browsers to web servers to pretend, you know, to tell them which browser, which operating system, blah, 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 that they're on so that they can serve content which are tailor-made for that particular environment. Let's say if it's an iPad or a Safari or a Chrome or an Internet Explorer. Okay. So let's pretend to be one. If you Google user agent strings, you'll get a hundred of them. Here, I've already done that for you. Ye I've decided to be macOS on Safari and macOS. All right, that's good enough for me. It's closest anyway to where I, what I'm doing here. So I'm going to pass the header and get the request and let's collect the request somewhere. So let's put it in an object called response and let's print the response. Let's see what happens to response. So response will not print everything. So we need to print response.content. So it will not print. The actual content is hidden. So let's save this as I don't know, beautiful soups underscore weather. Py. So I'm just going to clear my previous work here. And what we'll do is I've already on that folder. So let me run Python. Python three has too many versions of Python. And then I'll run vs weather. Yes, that's a lot of gibberish. At least it's not empty, which is good news for us. That means that's HTML, not very useful. But now we can parse that really ugly HTML. To do that, we have to soup it. The way to do it is to pass it to the beautiful soup. It has a parser in it, which then makes things queryable. Okay, so we're going to pass the response dot content to HTML basically and ask it to convert into an LXML format. So you can easily query it using selectors and, and like and such. Soup, we can collect that finally, you know. 
And now, uh, let's okay. Let's try and get something out of here so that we just understand how soup, beautiful soup works. Okay. So let me just go find something. Let me inspect this a bit. Okay. If I just inspect using Chrome Inspect tool, you will see that this particular partly cloudy span is inside a TD class, a TD, um, which is table data, and which always seems to have the class name description. Right? That's the first thing I look for is class names. But we're not going to actually use this now, So, but then um, use it as it is. And I'll show you, it's not a very secure way of doing it. But I'm going to sh just show it to you, just to show how beautiful soup works. Okay, so I'm going to do soup dot select. Okay, that means in all that document, the XML document, for me select, here we use a jQuery selector basically, right? If there was an ID, I would have done num, you know, hash to give the ID, but it's a class, so I'm going to do dot, just like jQuery, all that jQuery can do, this can do. Dot description, get me that, and uh, it gives me an array. So I don't want to print the whole array. Let's see if I can print the first element of that array. And then let's get me the get text. Always good habit to ask for text because there will be HTML probably sometimes. And then let's see if we can print this. So it will give me some actual data instead of just printing HTML. Let's see if we can bring out some data here. Ouch, that just gave me description. Right. I think I know why. Okay, so it's because it is description here. The first one we're going to skip here. All right, so we're going to go one. The first item has the words description in it because remember, it's a stable data, so the first row is useless. So, what we'll do is ask for the first one. We've got to skip that first one. All right, okay. There you go, clear. Okay, so clear seems to be a good description of whatever it is. Right now it's partly cloudy for us, but then when we query it there, I think it's changed already. All right, so pretty good. All right, so <clears throat> now let's see if we can get the rest of them all. Okay, so what we'll do, we need to get the whole bit. Okay, so in such a case, I'm going to comment this out so that you have no expectation that it's going to be like this. Okay, this is not a proper way of doing it. So what we'll do is we'll try and see what is the holder in which all of this come so that it doesn't go all over the place. Last thing we want is something for 29 Jan. You don't want to be getting some um, variable from here. Okay, it should be the same row. Let's see what holds them together. Right. So if you look at this TR, the TR holds them together. Right. So if I just say look at all this, as I move, it seems to move inside of it. There you go, right? So that is the table row. Okay. So, but inside that, what is that? I think there is another TD, right? There we go. Let's see what else is inside of it. Okay, TD, and then the left side of the TD is here, and then the the description and the temperature, blah 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 blah. It keeps going like that. Okay. So this is pretty good. So one of the things that we have to do first is to get the TR. Okay, the TR seems to always always have clickable closed as a class. Okay, so we are going to get. We're just going to select that, and I'm going to run through it in a for each loop. Okay, so that seems to be a pretty fair way of doing it. So I'm going to just say soup dot select. And do what is that called? I think it's called clickable. I'm just going to copy it. Clickable closed. So I'm just using clickable. And and I, I, so this is not useful. So I'm going to do a for each on this. So which means for item in clickable. That means each of these row you give me, and then oh, for not for. Each of these will be, you give it to me here, and I'm going to run through it and do whatever I want with it. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see now if we can get some data out of this. Okay, so let's uh, we just you can even do a print of that item. I 
and see how that prepares. Let's see. Okay. It should give you a lot of gibberish inside of it as HTML pieces, but at least we know we're progressing. Uh -oh. Okay, I think I did a mistake. Oh yeah, I didn't call with a dot because I'm going to tell it, tell beautiful super it's a class name, not just there you go. You got some content, it looks okay. And let's now query something within it. Okay, let's see something easy to query. Mm -hmm. There you go. I think this is pretty easy. Um, what is this entail? Yeah, if you look at that, it says day detail. Let's let's pull the day detail out, which is going to give us the 30th Jan, 29th Jan, blah blah blah, the days. All right. So day detail. Let's try and pull out day detail from this. All right. So in this content piece, we don't want the entire item. Comment that out. Let's do item and soup it and select from that. Remember this time I have to put the dot in place. Class name is day detail. And remember this is going to be an array. So we're going to do the first item of that array, even though it's always going to be one. And then we are going to do Make sure it's a text piece, otherwise there's all these weird stuff around it which we don't need. And let's print it. Print it. Definitely print it. Let's see if this has more sensible data. It should give a bunch of days. Yes. There you go. Today onwards, the next 10 days forecast. Or 15 days forecast. Good. So now let's get, which is a big breakthrough, isn't it? So now let's get the rest of it, right? So let's say what is, yeah, what is the description? Right. So just call it description. So I'm just going to call it description. Description. And here we go. Let's run it. And if we get more confident next time, we'll do everything. Okay, the description is clear, sunny, 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 sunny. Okay, it's a pretty good place where I want right now. Okay. Now let's get everything else. Okay. Uh, if you look at this, this is called class TMP. Okay, same technique. Let's just get the temperature. And because there are quite a few, I'm just going to copy paste these. So we're going to get temp, temperature. We are going to get precipitation um, what else will I'm, I'm assuming that to be precipitation <laughs> precip okay precip p r i e c i p precip then it's going to be wind okay wind wind class wind and the last one is humidity I'm assuming that will be called humidity. Yes, this is an easy one to describe because of the defined, well defined class names here. Is that all? Yes, I think that's all. Right. And if we print it, I think it'll. There, there is one more thing we should do is print a separator always, because then otherwise we can not tell one day from the other. And now let's see if we can print this. Here we go. Twelfth of Feb, sunny with this particular whatever that is temperature high and low. And 10%, I think, humidity, no precipitation, and this is the wind speed, and this is the humidity. Okay. Um, it feels like a little sparse. So I think what's happening here is if you really look at this here, right, there is a little bit more explanation of what this is in the title here. If you see the title, if I go mouse over it, I think there is some more ex better explanation of what this is. Partly cloudy, expect widespread areas of smoke and haze, reducing visibility at times, low nines, degrees, winds, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, it seems to be a title for every any of this. So we can pick any of this and extract the title. 
okay let's just do that let's see let's learn how to do that okay and um, let's take for example the prescription and see if we can get the title for this okay so i think the way to get it is to simply ask for it like so as an attribute and this should give us i'll be pretty surprised if it doesn't work only when you do a video do you realize how many people call you per minute per 15 minutes anyways i don't know if you guys heard my phone ringing but i'm just waiting for the weather thing to respond Sometimes my connection is a bit slow. Sorry about that, guys. I have no control over it right now. Here we go. We got it. Generally clear, I expect blah, 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 blah. Okay. So it's changing it, even though it looks the same. But if you see it closely, high 19, high 20, the weather is not going to change much in the next 15 days here. Low nines here. Okay. So it's different. Right. We are already through midway through the day, so it's different and uh, brilliant, isn't it? So that's it. So that's how you scrape using beautiful soup okay, to get whatever data you want. This is the proper way of doing it and also using the headers. Uh, but this is not enough if you are going to scale this into hundreds and thousands of queries, if you need to do that, whether it's weather or whatever else you do. Uh, for a few hundred should be okay, but if you scale more than that and if you want to do it in a regular way, you need to, you will get blocked because of IP blocks. Okay, so because your IP address cannot be masked, so uh, you can keep restarting a browser or a router only so many times. So if you want a headache less way of doing it, the best way to do it is not enough. You need to use a professional service. There's no way around it. We've done that for years and finally we created our own rotating proxy service. And I'm going to pitch that to you now because it is important. <laughs> uh, so if you want to scale it, 90% of the time this is fine. This is only for advanced users. If that is the, your requirement, uh, consider using it. There are other services, of course, but um, by us, you know, we've been we've been at this for a while now, and so we know what we're doing. And we do millions of uh, URL fetches per day for hundreds of our clients already. And uh, so we know what they you know how to scale it, and more or less all of them will pass through. And so what we do is we take your request, let's say weather.com, you pass that as a parameter itself to our URL. So you're going to not query weather directly. You're going to call our API with your API key, of course, and then pass the URL that you finally want as a parameter. And then we route it through millions of proxies, high-speed residential, private, anonymous proxies with um, pretty easy ways to uh, and make sure that we rotate the browser agents and we rotate and retry it automatically till you get the data. So there are a thousand API calls free for you without any credit card you can get the API key and you get started and no questions asked, no credit card asked um, and you can test uh, with thousand that's more than enough to test anything. Even otherwise I hope you enjoyed the tutorial uh, even if you don't want this, absolutely fine. Uh, and if you have any doubts, please leave comments. I'm happy to respond as well. Thank you.